All right, so let's pull this thing apart. Uh, this one, yeah, it's pretty filthy. So flip it over and let's pull out these rear screws. There's six screws, not very difficult, just standard Phillips head. Uh, I like to use like a medium sized one. Okay, so we've got the screws out and let's take the lid off. These things have a, have an LED here at the front that's attached with a wire. So you should just lift the cover back in that sort of manner and you'll see how it's connected. Dog's going crazy in the background, but that's what happens. All right, so, um, right, if you want to disconnect the LED, uh, the best way to do it is to fold these legs back, which will kind of stand them upright, like so, and the connector will just slide off. It's, it's a funny design, actually. Straighten them out, and the connector comes straight off, so. Uh, straighten the pins, slide straight off. That way the lid's out of the way. You can move on. Uh, next thing is the, the heat shield or the um, the RF shield. So let's take it let's take it out, just the screws around the edge. Let's see what we're working with. I'll just quickly whip these screws out. Okay. So Take those screws out and lift the shield off and there you go you can see that and we've got the board right there and we've got some rust and corrosion down this end so it's probably had a spill at some stage in its life okay so with this you know, the loose card slot uh first thing we're going to try is just to tighten up these pins it, it could all it could be the loose pins dirty pins or it could be uh, drier solder joints underneath, in which case we'd have to take out the board and just reflow all those joints. But as a quick fix, so let's try and just bend these pins back. So what I like to do is just use a tool like this, a little kind of hook tool, which you can pick up a whole pack of these for like $3, uh, and just push the pins down like so. Now I know what you're thinking, you know, that's too far, but it is, but it gives, it kind of bends the metal and just gives it a chance to readjust to that position uh, and then we fix them all up we put them all back to where they should be and I'll show you how to do that quickly so we just quickly go through the whole lot and bend them all as the cart goes in and out over the years these bits of metal are on a little sort of spring-loaded and they just get used to sitting um, with the cart sort of in so they get used to sitting in a, a flattened out sort of position and that sort of Let's say it wears it out over time. It's sort of just the metal fatigues. Okay, so I've I've bent them all back. Um, so you, you click it sort of into that position, and then when you insert the cartridge again, it sort of re-straightens all the pins, and you get them nice and straight again with a little bit more tension. So that's the plan. Then I get some contact cleaner. It's just basically an alcohol spray. Spray it in the connector. No, it doesn't hurt, it's just alcohol, and you can even see it, it'll evaporate pretty rapidly on camera. I then like to insert the cartridge a few times to sort of clean those pins. And you can even get a bit of cloth, I use microfiber, with, a, with, a, with an old credit card or an old plastic card, and just force that into the slot to sort of clean the pins, pull it back out. All right, so moment of truth, just a really basic fix. Let's see if that works. Let's plug it in the, uh, and let's see what happens. I'll pick up the camera, but just switched it on. And we go, so it still works. It did always work, but it had the slight problem. So let's see what happens when I move the cart. Okay, so that's all good. So that all looks great on the screen. Let's just give this a wiggle. Okay, so that's better. All right, so it might have just been... Yep, still good. All right, so it might have been all it was. Okay, retention of the pins.
That's all that one took. Yeah. I'll just turn it off so you can hear what I'm saying. We'll put it back together. We'll give it a clean. I'll I'll take a look at this area here. I'll, I'll probably will lift the board out, give it a good clean, get rid of all that rust and corrosion. Uh, I'll just inspect the voltage regulators, make sure they're all okay, not overheated. Uh, the caps all look pretty good. I don't really see a need to change them at the moment. They're actually all working. It's good to see the edge connector still in place, like the protector, which means no one's really used this to, on a mega CD. So, look, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. That works. So, I think we'll probably leave this one here. So, that's a Genesis Model 1. And it just had loose slot pins. So, that's pretty good. That's a good win there. On to the next one. I'm just going to take the board out and just check underneath this area here, this corrosion. So there's just one more screw down here, just right near the audio connector. That one was left. Uh, most of the screws come out with the heat shield. So you're already three quarters of the way there. Just one in the corner and three here on the plate, on this uh, heat sink plate. Those two and that one up there, pull them out. Obviously, you've got two in the cartridge slot, the black ones. They're a bit longer as well. Um, that's what you need to do. You don't need to unscrew the ro the regulators. They'll just lift right out. And if you kind of hold it here and here, the whole lot should, there we go, just tweak right out. Uh, you're still tethered, but it's okay just to flip this over. To clean it up, I'm just gonna use some uh, isopropyl alcohol, just this brand right here. Uh, you know, you could really take your time and pull this apart, but I think this will be fine. Just spray it on in the affected areas, like that. It smells quite strong, it's just an alcohol. And then just rub it down. It just This will just stop any further problems. This board's actually in pretty good nick, it's no problem at all. Just clean all these up. You can see it all coming off there. Okay. This area here, yeah, look, it's just a bit of bit of tin, really. It's not not that critical at all. It's just a lower heat shield. Bit of rust. All right, let's put this back together. Okay, that's sitting back in. That can theoretically move over in a second. Right, let's put it all back together, and this one's done. Cartridge slot screws. And then we've got the three screws over the other side on the heat shield. Don't forget this little corner screw down here. It's just right there. Put that back in. Okay, so we're all set. Okay, now we're going to put on the heat shield. Yeah, this goes just like that. Goes back in. It all sits down nice and flat. To be honest, you don't really need to reassemble this. It's actually an RF shield. Uh, the reason you don't need to is because you'd be mental to use RF these days. So RF is the radio frequency output. It's what we used to connect to old TVs. Nowadays, we're gonna use this connector, which has composite video, which I don't like. And it also has RGB, red, green, and blue, which is the best video output you can get from these consoles. So highly recommend use that connector. Either video standard is okay, don't use this one. So any reason this shield was ever designed and put in place, as well as the bottom one, as it's running on your TV, other things in your house, like, a, like electric motors, even a fridge kicking in and running its compressor with a motor inside, that's gonna output a bit of electromagnetic radiation. It's not dangerous radiation, it's just electromagnetic waves in the air. And that gets picked up by this and it'll transmit it to the TV. And you would, you remember in the old days, you see interference on the TV. Your mum might turn on a blender and it uh, fuzzes up the TV. That's exactly what we're talking about. Okay, so that's all back together. And I've washed up the lid. Uh, it's a little bit wet still. That's all good, I took the reset button out, gave that a scrub. Uh, I was actually missing the uh, volume slider, so I'll dig one up for my spare parts bin and put that back together. So LED link has to go on. Uh, I think the long leg's positive, so it should be the red, and the short leg will be the negatives. So you just slide it all the way down, back to the bottom, like that, and just bend them over, just as they were. Pull the game out, put it all back together. 
I'll put the screws in and we'll move on to the next one.